that in one more time. Go, take go three. ahead. Take, take three. Take three. Take three. Third time's a charm. Okay. Okay, Chris, why don't you go ahead and read us that story that was sent in? Uh, because it's now officially going to be on the podcast. This is Allison's third attempt. That was that was better. <laughs> that was better. But, you know, I'll let you bring us back from the second break, okay? Okay, thanks. All right. Let, let me get into the story. It came from an anonymous writer who actually went to our website and went to awkwardpodcast.com and left this there. You can always head over there, leave us your awkward stories, check out past episodes, all that good stuff. All right. But this is what they wrote in and said. <clears throat> let me prepare myself. When I first met my husband, his mom used to care for his nephews and nieces for his brothers. She did this for free as she didn't believe that grandparents should be paid for watching their grandkids. At this time, she was also in a financial position that allowed her to make such a statement. The most she has ever accepted for childcare was $50 a week. Fast forward, my husband and I are expecting our daughter and asking her to babysit. We could pay $250 a week. She said it was, a li- it was too little, so we offered her $300 a week. And it was the most that we could afford because at the time I was a student teaching and made zero dollars. Eventually, she tried to negotiate watching her at or her da- their daughter at her house or doing other things. The whole thing got really weird. So we took our daughter to daycare. Two years later, I'm changing schools and don't want my daughter to have to change daycares. We asked my mother-in-law if she would drop her off uh, for us and we would pay her. She agreed and then offered to watch my daughter for nine hundred dollars a month. We said no and just needed someone to drop her off. How do we approach child care payments for my daughter with my mother-in-law? We both understand that she is no longer in a financial situation to offer free child care, but we also feel that she takes advantage of our financial stability. If she watches her for a date night, she refuses payment and says, no, I'm grandma. And yet she still asks for money for, or wait, she still asks for more money than she asks anyone else when it comes to child care. How do we have a conversation about payment when she has been so inconsistent with her request for payment? P.S. I promise I won't get mad at your response, Allison. So there we go. Allison, I, take us away. Because I think you've had experience giving advice to people about mother-in-laws and how much they should be paying for, you know, or charging oh, yeah. for daycare. Well, I just want to throw in thank you to this anonymous writer for that kind P.S. Um, <laughs> Because I have been known to receive some negative feedback based off of my, uh, anyway, my responses. But honestly, like, this is a very interesting situation because, you know, the the mom's, the, the grandma, we'll just call her grandma, her financial situation changed. So I do... Logan says, what kind of BS granny is this? Okay, Logan, <laughs> calm down. Okay? And then... Then, then Michelle says, crazy granny. So I think of, of everyone that's watching this live, they all agree that maybe grandma is just, you know, a little maybe, intense. Maybe, maybe we're just a little bit intense. Um, I can first say that when I had children, so this is what I did when I had children, because I'm going to speak on myself. You know, I, I did not live nearby where my mom could could watch. I mean, my mom's still working full time, but even when I had children, she was working full time. But one thing that she and I did talk about one, one time (laughs) was how she had a friend once who was watching her children's, was watching her grandchildren. And it got to the point where the grandma no longer wanted to do that because she was feeling like she was being like taken advantage of in a way mm, and yeah. like the babysitter. And so my mom had said to me, not that it even would have ever been a possibility because we didn't live nearby, but she had said that if I ever needed that type of help, she would be hesitant to it because she wanted to maintain that grandma relationship and not the like disciplinarian and, yeah. and you know, child care relationship. So that's something that I think, number one, can create an issue when it comes to, you know, asking for help from grandparents. Now, I would have loved for my mom to watch my kids because you know they're going to love them. You know they're going to treat them well. You know they're going to do every, you know, all those types of things. But when it comes to the payment portion, it's really uh, getting in the way. And I think another thing is that it's, it almost seems like a lot. Like it seems like a lot of money. It it does like so if we go back to this so she said they offered two fifty a week which is a th- roughly a, like a thousand dollars a month is basically that's what they're a lot. offering. I and don't know it, where this person lives, but like that's and I don't know how old the child is. So Chris, one thing you might not know, <clears throat> since you are only an uncle, <laughs> is that oh only <laughs> only I know is that 
the older that a child gets, typically the less that they pay for each month because the class size can get better. I'm so aware like, of that. Okay. So like <laughs> infants are really, you know, putting a child in an infant in daycare is a lot more expensive, but still two fifty a week is a lot for one kid. That's especially considering it's like family because here's the thing. They offered two fifty. Then she, then she said that was not enough. So they countered with 300 a week, bring it up to $1,200. Yeah. And she was like, no, that's basically, that's not good enough. And then she, I think they said at some point she did up, I, uh, let's see, she offered eventually 900 a month is after a couple years later when they came and approached her again. But at that point they didn't need childcare. They just wanted yeah. someone to help drop her off. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Here, I have something here from the chat. Uh, let's see, let me bring it up here. This is from Michelle. Let's see. Oh, no, wait, no. It was from, who was it here? Uh, I like what Michelle has to say. So Jeff said, I think it comes down to them disclosing their total income and maybe the grandmother is not ashamed to ask for plenty. Like maybe they're making good money. So grandma's Mm -hmm. like, ah, $900 is nothing for you. Let's drop in the bucket. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and pass it along over here. Yeah. He said, Michelle, let's see. This is Michelle here. Go ahead. You take that one. Uh, Michelle says granny should charge the same across the board. The grandkids don't have any income and they all act up the same. (laughs) All the same headache. (laughs) Exactly. I agree. I think that having like a consistency, what's happening here is there's no consistency, right? And it's that one person feels like they should be getting more money because they do well financially. The other person feels like, okay, well, this isn't fair because you didn't do this for the other kids. And so what's happening is there's, there has not been consistency. And so emotions are getting involved. If there was consistency across the board over the years, then it removes the emotion out of the decision. But now you have this this couple feeling like they, you know, grandma's taking advantage of them a little bit. And because of that, it led them to put their kid in daycare. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of sad if you think about it. Yeah. I I think too, another thing is like, there is a jump in time. They didn't explain uh, in this, this uh, story, how much time passed between when Mm -hmm. the grandmother was watching her other kids, kids to when now they have this need for childcare. And it could be that, like, I think you mentioned that maybe her financial situation changed. So maybe Mm -hmm. back then it was fine. And now she's like, well, look, I need some more money. So let me, let me up my rate from $50 a week to some number above $300 a week. Um, Mm -hmm. So, which is hard because you don't want to use your family as a way to kind of bridge the gap between your, like your income shortfalls. I feel like that's, Mm -hmm. that's a separate conversation. Like, Yep. If they're willing to watch your kids is one conversation, but then if they're having troubles financially, that's a separate conversation. And I think they're getting shoved together right now and becoming one really awkward conversation. Yes, I agree. And I also think that there's just not a separation. So for mm-hmm. instance, um, in here, she had said, you know, she, uh, if she watches her kids for date night, she refuses payment and says, no, I'm grandma. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah. so it's like, it, it, it's it almost depends like, on the okay, situation. Exactly. So if I have, you know, a, if I have like a sick kid at home, but I have an important meeting at work, do I pay you? Do I not pay you? Mm-hmm. So I almost think this needs to be like an all or nothing thing because it, or you just need to have an upfront conversation. So you have two, to me, I think you have two choices. Number one, just say, okay, we're not going to use grandma for help. Yeah. You know, and we will use her to have, she can have grandparent time with the children, but we're not going to rely on her for childcare time because it seems like it's just getting too gray. It's getting too mixed up. So that's choice number one. Choice number two is to say, sit down and say, okay, we want to be very clear and set clear expectations around, you know, if, if you are taking our child to and from daycare to help out, we would love to pay you a hundred dollars you know, or $50 a week or a hundred dollars a week. And that helps cover gas plus some of your time, but having very, very clear, like, this is what we can offer you. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not like, I don't know. Do you say it's not negotiation? I don't know. I mean, cause you, she doesn't have to do anything. Right. So you can say, no. this is how much we can afford to provide. And if she says, no, you kind of just mm-hmm. stuck right with a, um, this is what it is because you can't this, you can't force her to operate on a specific dollar amount for exactly. her child care services. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think that it's I think it's uncomfortable and I think that these things will happen yeah. when you have any family member, whether it's grandma, cousin, you know, aunt, uncle, 
helping out with childcare, you're going to have these convers you're going to have to have these conversations. However, I will say that having family members help out with childcare is also a wonderful opportunity. It's there's so many benefits, but there also needs to be clear expectations with that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You need to you need to set down the rules. And I think also let me go back to the question here, because one of the things you said at the end was, or I, or I don't know who this is, but they said, um, how do we have a conversation about payment when she has been so inconsistent in her request for payment? Because okay. I, and I think what they're saying is inconsistency is spread over. It seems like multiple years, like originally mm-hmm. 50 bucks a week, then they jumped up to some number above 300 a week. Mm-hmm. Then it went to some number around 900 a month. And I think it's because the, I'm sure this grandma doesn't sound like she runs a daycare. So she doesn't know no. what, you know, she's not set up as a business. She has no fee structure. So for her, she's probably just like, well, what do I think is a fair amount for my time? Mm-hmm. Well, and, what do I need? Yeah. Yeah. What do I, what, what are my gaps, in my income? What could help me out? And she's coming up with a number based off of that. And I, with this, it feels like if you're going to approach her about her inconsistencies in mm-hmm. payment or try to come up with some number, you have to almost forget that that fifty dollar a week arrangement happened with the mm-hmm. uh, the siblings before. Like that happened, it's over. You can't base what you think they should pay based of what other people did in the past because people yeah. can change their minds. And so I think you almost have to just say, look, we like you said, we know what what we can afford. And Mm -hmm. are you okay with this? And if they're not, you have to just be okay with saying, well, this is just not an option for us. Maybe the occasional date night she's fine with, but an ongoing like childcare arrangement is not going to work based off of the money that she wants. Yeah. Um, Michelle said that my ex mother-in-law would only babysit if my ex and I went out together. If I wanted to do anything alone, even laundry, she wouldn't babysit. So those are very clear boundaries that the mother-in-law yeah. had. Like, And the thing I think with boundaries is that your boundaries that you set, like they have to be good for you. And we can't always worry about how the other, like this sounds so rude, but we, how someone receives your boundaries is their thing to deal with. Yeah. That is that is their yep. job. It is their job to deal with those boundaries that you set. But you setting boundaries, that's for you to deal with. So I think it exactly. can be really easy for us to be worried about like, well, what will grandma say when we want to do this? Um, but you, you, we can't take on ownership of how someone else receives the boundaries that we set. And that's something I have to work on personally. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, it's hard to set boundaries and be okay but, with that. I have a question, Chris. Oh. So, you know, you have your lovely, amazing, fabulous niece. Mm-hmm. So what would you do if you had your brother who is just looks so dashingly young compared to you? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, what would you do if he came to you and said, hey, Chris, I know you work from home. I know you have some free time. We really need you to watch, you know, your niece. Like, could you just watch her? in the mornings like can we just drop her off so you can watch her from like you know eight to two every Mm. every morning and we'll pay you well one i don't think my brother would ever do that (laughs) he he would because because they have great there's grandparents who they've turned to who want to but if they if they came to me i don't don't think one i don't think he would ever do that to me uh but if he did i would have to say i can do it for a little bit like you know i could do a couple of hours but you know the time frame you just gave was what like five hours like (laughs) like, you know i would love to but i have to work so i won't be able to do that so i would just be upfront. but it doesn't feel like but i think me and my brother have that relationship where i can just be very blunt and upfront, and he can do the same with me and it's not a big deal (laughs) uh but i think in this situation that doesn't seem like they're comfortable with that yeah yeah. <laughs> Michelle, <Chris. laughs> so Michelle said, Chris would say, new phone, who this? <laughs> <laughs> new phone. Oh. I love that. Oh but my you know, gosh. But uh, here's, here's one exception for this, for this grandparent scenario here. Um, I think it was Michelle who said this. She said, if granny turned down a job to babysit, then I understand. Otherwise, she's just milking the richer kid. Uh, so, yeah, like if, if you have to give up your job <laughs> to then mm-hmm. provide child care, then, yeah, you need to ask for more money. Yeah. Like, I'm going to need I'm going to need at least something close to what I was making before mm-hmm. to be able to keep you know living. But, yeah, I, outside of that, you kind of just have to come up with your own arrangement. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And then also when she had said just one more thing I wanted to to touch on, it says if she watches her for date night, she refuses payment and says, no, I'm grandma. Like I would be like, if my, if either of the grandparents and my kids, like my in-laws and my parents were like, 
oh, date night? Like, that'll be $50. I would be like, what? Like, that would be really, <laughs> I would be like, uh, no. They're like, you know my Venmo. This is, I would be like, my cash app. you should be thankful I gave you grandkids that you can spend time with. There's parents all over the world who want their children to have kids. There's a there's a family in Japan that are suing their son because he didn't give <laughs> give them kids. I did see that. So I would say I would be like no, but if it came down, I don't know. There's like clear boundaries. If it came down to like wanting to like consist that consistent childcare, I think that would be different. And so I yeah. think just having that conversation, you either have to decide that you know that this inconsistency is not worth it, and you don't need that support, and you don't need that help, and and that's it. Or you sit down and you have a conversation with, hey, we really need your help, you know, taking our child to and from daycare. Here's what we can pay you, um, you know, to help out for gas and for your time. Um, if if that's something that you're not interested in, we totally understand. We'll figure something else out. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree because, yeah, like if it's the one off date night is a lot different than every mm-hmm. day we plan to drop this kid off here and they're going to be here for like eight hours. Yeah, and, you know. Exactly. And maybe the grandma's like, hey, maybe I need some more money. Maybe I would have gone out and got a job, got a part time job. Yeah. And but instead, I'll do this babysitting gig and that'll fill that same mm-hmm. gap of time for me. But yeah, exactly. you kind of just have to be OK. Like you have to just I think for what they're asking, you need to just figure out for yourself. What are you smelling? Well, my children are home, but my husband isn't. And something smells like it's been cooking and they're not allowed to use like any appliances well i mean if you're smelling burnt toast that means you're having a stroke so we can pause this if you need to leave yeah i think it'll be okay i don't hear (laughs) one time i was on a meeting and i came out and they were like mom look what happens when you put foil in the microwave and i was like oh no (laughs) so we just have a history you Mm, know mm. so i'm trying to decide what that smells like and if i should be concerned so sorry sorry about that but i do want to say speaking of date nights and grandparents, my mom is coming over tonight to watch my kids so Matt and I can have a date night. Hey, make sure you got you got the cash app ready for her. Say, here you go, Grandma. Here's seventy five well, dollars. Honestly, I was like, Oh, we wanted to go on a date and I was like, Should I ask our babysitter or should I ask my mom? And I was like, I don't wanna save money. I'm gonna ask my mom. Oh, did so, your mom watch this live? Can we send her the link? No, Just so know. you I'm no, gonna know. Let her know. Money is on the table. No, so I'm letting I her know. Hey, know. She, she was Allison is money. willing to pay money. Don't let her rip I, you off. You get you no. get your money. You go on a nice trip. Go have a nice no. meal on and that you money. Know what she said, "She said I would love to because we're about to go out of town, and I don't know when I'm going to see them next." I was like, "Great, thanks, mom." Mm-mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna send your mom all of this so that way she can know. She I'm like, you need to raise your rates. And you know we got grandmas out say? there charging nine hundred dollars a month. You can at least you can <laughs> ease you can easily get half of that. <laughs> My mom would say, "No, that I'm not going to do that." I'll convince her. So. We'll, we'll have a conversation. No, because sometimes my mom, okay, so my mom helps out whenever I go out of town. Like when we go to that conference in September, she'll come and she'll get here by the time Matt leaves in the morning at 5.15 or 5.30. Mm. She'll be at my house. I know. which means, And she lives 30 minutes away. And then she stays with my kids. She gets them ready. She takes them to school. And then she, maybe I should be buying her gift cards. Should I be buying her gift cards for this? Man, well, you're going to be the next topic for our, goes, for our upcoming episodes. She goes to work and then... She comes, she leaves work early and she comes back and she picks them up from school and she stays with them and makes dinner until Matt gets home. And so she does that every now and then when I go out of town for a conference. Should I, maybe I'll start getting her a gift card as a thank you. So so when everyone, if you're in the chat, whether you're in Discord or if you're on YouTube watching this, uh, let us know. Is Allison ripping off her mom? Can we, can I post that question in the chat? Is Allison... (laughs) That's fine. You can post that question. Here's my thing, though. It's not often. It's usually twice a year. And she always says she's so thankful she can do it. See, I used to live five and a half hours away from her. And so this was the kind of thing that she's like, I'm just so thankful you've moved closer so I can do this. That's that's like her her mindset of it. I feel like this and is I'm very like, strategic by you. Like you're like, we're going to move far away. Get them real desperate for grandkids, right? <laughs> And then by the time we come back, they're going to be so happy to see them that they won't even dream of asking for a penny. I see. You're playing the long game here. And I I would never pay her. She would never ask for money. But I could get her a nice gift. I could get her a gift card. Like an Amazon gift card. She loves Amazon. Yeah. Jeff said you should be at least getting your mom a gift. Come on now. 
Okay, so like how much would I gift my mom for helping out? So like I'm going away in September. She's going to help out for four days. Let's see. The going rate is $900 a month. <laughs> so let me see. What is, uh, let's see, four divided by 30. We're looking at 13%. So. Uh, oh, my gosh. 13, so we're going to go uh, 13% times 900. Uh, so $117. $117. There you Coming go. your way, mom. So get that we got it. We got it recorded. Amazon, we got it recorded. Amazon gift card. I might just round it up to one twenty or yeah. That's the least you can do. That's the least okay. you can do. I was gonna round it down, but I thought you'd give me hate. <laughs> round it down. <laughs> I was gonna round it down to twenty five. <laughs> no, I was gonna round it down to a hundred. But oh. you'd give me some hate for that, so I'll do, do you, that. Do you have any parting words for our uh, for our writer? My parting words are. I think you should just keep taking your kid to daycare and just not deal with it. Seems a lot less messy to do it that way. I mean, if you already have your kid in a daycare that they like, I would say, like, I would, I would say, you know, for date nights, find a good babysitter maybe, but then also let your mom, you know, let your mother-in-law have options to spend time with her grandkids like always offer it but just say hey you know if you're busy if not we'll, we'd happily get a babysitter like my husband and I Matt and I we go out once a week on a date night during the school year and we can't rely on my mom that's asking too much yeah so we have she's working a babysitter too. yeah we have a babysitter that's on standby oh my husband's calling me speaking of hands he's up. like I've been watching the live stream and now we're paying your mom 120 dollars <laughs> <laughs> anyway and so um and now I can't think. What was I saying? I don't even I'm know. I'm just going to drink more caffeine. Go and drink caffeine. I'll say I like uh, Michelle's idea here. I think she said they should charge per pound, like a buffet. <laughs> so the bigger per the kid gets, it costs baby? more money. Ha, the, the, the bigger they are, <laughs> they cost more money. Yeah, That's you got you get grandma trying to pick up this heavy baby. You got to give her some, you know, hazard oh pay or gosh. something for that. Hey, random side note, random, random side note, and then we can go to our break. Matt, my husband, who just called me, said mm-hmm. that he has this thing. He's been listening to all these crazy podcasts, and it's about you, like in 2022. Really, you can't say all these crazy podcasts because that could mean a lot of things. Okay, he's listening to some crazy podcasts, and he ha- he wants to live to a hundred. Okay, I no okay, I, I was nervous. That. I didn't know what type of crazy podcast you were talking about, so it sounds like this is not the type of crazy podcast that I was worried about. Okay, go for it. Oh, I don't know what you're worried about. You can tell me that when we're off the air. <laughs> So he wants to, he's listening to these podcasts, he's like health podcasts, and he wants okay. to live to be 100. And he said one of his goals, this is, this is, I'm tying this in, this is ADD, tying this into the baby, holding a baby and knowing their weight. One of his goals is when he's 100, he wants to be able to lift a 30-pound baby over his head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. Ooh, so he's doing what? all of these weird what? exercises to like, Make sure he's in the like epitome. Like he is, we, we have this new scale that like oh. tells you your like, you know, your BMI and all these stats and like how old your metabolic age is. And he's like three years younger than me. Like he's so ridiculously healthy. And he's like, I just want to be able to hold a baby, a 30 pound baby over my head when I'm 100. And I'm like, that's good. I don't want to be alive when I'm 100. That sounds miserable. But, but why a 30 pound baby? Like why not like a 30 know. pound suitcase? Cause I'm going to be on an airplane. Like why, why specific, why is the baby <laughs> the measurement for this? I don't know. He also wants to be able to be on the ground and get up by only using one hand. Okay, that's a, that. that I understand that one because that's something that they yeah. say. They say you should. One of the things you should do regularly is get on the ground and then get up from the ground and then oh, okay. be seated and stand up because as you age, you start to lose that ability because you do that less okay. and less. Well, so, anyway, I, so that's I funny. <laughs> now what he should be doing is he should be able to get on the ground, get up with one hand while also lifting a thirty-pound baby <laughs> in the air. Now, if you can combine those two together, he's gonna live to be like one one fifty at least. Yeah. I think so too. So anyway, it, it's very specific about that baby weight. And I'm just like, okay. So now he used to always say, I'm going to die before you. But now he's like, no, I'm going to outlive her. And I'm like, good. Like, I don't. Like, he's like, I've been, I've been watching how you're living. I think I can outlive you. I have no desire to live until I'm 100. You have fun. I'll meet you up in heaven later. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll hang out. But like, that sounds miserable. So oh, anyway. Man. 